my bias is when I see a fighter who's really fucking good and they don't perform. I let you have it, have it last week. Go ahead. I'm the UFC matchmaker. You wouldn't know who certain niggas are. They be at Lowe's. <laughs> 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 who is the worst commentator in the UFC? All right, man. We back, man. Tapping in podcast. Your boy Philly Fresh. Back by popular demand, and he's here to stay. Dean Thomas, man. This guy has been. Everybody, uh, y'all give it up to Dean. Come give on, it up to Dean. Give it up to Dean. Yay. We got to give it again the right intro. Dean. 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 So, you know, it's funny that because uh, my partners in the cafe that I opened, they now have that as like. The um is the thing that when people come in they ask for the dingling special yeah oh they, they get my the little god hookup. yeah they gotta be a pause yeah. right yeah next to that's how that order is. <laughs> that is great the pause emoji right yeah. next to it <laughs> that is I'm never coming to get the dingling special <laughs> yeah right here yeah. so like if you if you got the balls to get the dingling <laughs> special you gonna my, get it yeah my lady ain't even yeah. going there <laughs> no ma'am <laughs> where you going hell hey, no what hell no but yeah man um. Dean, man, Dean has been present in my fight career since I whooped his fighter's ass. Yeah, I have been, man. And, and Donnie Bush, shout out Donnie Bush. <laughs> there we go, shout out Donnie. In 2015, yeah. he's been tapping in with me, always been over my ear, in my ear, over my shoulder, man, helping me out, dropping knowledge. I appreciate you. I appreciate you always believing in me. I appreciate you being here, man. Um, you drove a, a long way to, to, to be a part of this, man. I appreciate it. And um, we go, we're going to go, man. We're going to go to the top. Well, you got good energy, you. man. And appreciate I like to be around your energy. And I like to come and see your little setup here. Because when I come here, I know that you're doing it. Like, I know that you're making it. And a lot of fighters ain't making it. They don't understand the game. I see that you understand the game. And the big picture of the game. The big picture of the game. So, I always want to be involved in that. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it, man. I was just asking him about that, like. Let me finish eating this gummy bear. Yeah, man. <laughs> you brought him out here. Yeah, you yeah. brought out the gummy snacks. I was like, are you supposed to go in the drink? Or yeah, right. <laughs> we supposed to just eat them like a child. But uh, I was just asking him, like, man, because the UFC is like a lick. You know what I mean? Really. You know, it's not really like a career like you can do, like the MLB. You can go be a manager. It's 100% a lick. Yeah. 100%. So, the fact that Dean was able to turn it into a career. Come like on. The NBA. I'm like, how did you do that? Come on. Yeah, so it's funny you talked about this because just the other day I was talking to Juliana Pena mm -hmm. and she said she had a conversation with Hunter Campbell and Hunter mm -hmm. Campbell told her, this is not a career, this is an opportunity. The UFC is an opportunity, not a career. But I'm always trying to help people make a career out of it because I know how passionate. Mm -hmm. Like, you brother's passionate about the game, man. Like, you want to stay in it. And that's how I was. Like, I just wanted to be involved in some way. So I was like, what can I do to stay involved? So I did everything. I promoted shows, fought, trained, had school. So the more valuable you are in different areas, the easier it's going to be for people to be like, yo, you need some help. And I was there. Mm, so break that down like in actions. Like what can somebody do? Like if they like, look, all right, cool. Be just, what, what can they actively do right now? Start saying. Like, well, before we started recording, you said something that was like so important. You said... Because you run the school. Right. And dudes be like, yo, man, I want to work, man. How much you going to pay me? The worst thing you can ask somebody is, how much you going to pay me? Because now we know that you don't really care about the job. Mm. And I need somebody that cares about the job. Mm. Like, when you care. For me, I don't really charge nobody for nothing. I go, listen, I'm going to do the work, and I'm going to do it the best I can. And what you feel that was worth, you pay me that. And I've always been successful from having that mentality because... The works the work comes first right the work comes first like I don't care what the pay is like I'm as long as it's fun for me I'm gonna do the best I can the work comes first and when the work comes first the money comes with it everything comes with it you know what that makes sense and I'm I'm just dabbling in the business where I'm just learning to turn myself into a brand and monetize myself and capitalize off what I've created in the fight game <clears throat> and I've had a business prior um, I had a business inside of the Florida mall and I didn't realize until I had my business like niggas don't care about your shit like you do 
You know what I'm saying? No matter what it is, no matter who it is, and this ain't a knock to anybody, nobody cares about your shit like you're gonna. So like, you envision all this stuff in your head. Oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna hire this person, I'm gonna hire that person. But no one's gonna care about what you got going on like you do. So why what you said works is because people see the value in him, right? Um, me as a business owner, I saw that motherfuckers was just, just there for the hourly check. You know what I'm saying? Like they didn't see the, the vision, right? They just there to get paid. But if I saw somebody that was there that wanted to grow and, want, and saw the bigger picture and I saw the value in them, then it would have been different. But that was a big learning curve for me to realize that niggas don't care about your shit like you do. Most people are just lazy. That's a fact. More than, more than anything, they just lazy. They don't care about they shit. <laughs> they just want to get a little check they so they get. Yeah. They just want to get a little check so they can get high on the weekends and play video games. Mm -hmm. That's, That's it. Yeah. That's, That's all they want to do. And like that, because everything is an opportunity. Like any time somebody gives you a chance to do something. That's an opportunity for you to show that you could do more. Like every, I treat everything like it's an audition. It's an audition for the next for the mm. next job. Mm. So if I do a good job here, even if even if the money ain't right, I don't care. I'm going I'm going to do it right so that because you never know who's watching. Somebody might be watching to give you another gig. That's why I always get work. Just because like I'm always doing the next thing and then I'm available to do the next thing. Yeah, and I'm and I'm in the cut taking notes because. I, I want to do what he does specifically like and I've been wanted to do what he does and like the people around me that know they know like Dean Tool shout out to Dean Tool that's my homie he's followed my career since I was an amateur and he helped me get a lot of these profiles to get to the UFC and I've been I wanted to be a commentator forever I've commentated on his show so I'm literally actively watching him I'm trying to see how to play the angle I'm trying to see how to maneuver myself so I can put myself in that position because those jobs, a lot of motherfuckers want those jobs, right? And and I can tell they're 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 not hard to come by because I know so many people want those jobs. So, but here's the thing, though: so many people want those jobs, but they weren't able to keep them. Like all these, like you seen dudes mm -hmm. on there, True. they got auditions, they had their audition for the job, didn't get it, or they gave them opportunities to work it. Bala Muhammad. Uh, Angela Hill mm -hmm. and they don't get called back because Bilal ugly on the desk though. Bilal, Bilal <laughs> well, is crazy just, on the desk nose it's, this way yeah. he had an ascot on with a geek in suit yeah. <laughs> well, it's, look crazy, it's because it's, it's more it's more than just talking fights yeah it's it's doing the work it's, you gotta put the work in like you, you gotta you wanna show up to fight you gotta put the work in you wanna show up on the desk you gotta put the work in and sometimes they don't put enough work in and they don't get called back so for you, I know you're gonna put the work in. Absolutely, you're gonna put the work in, and you know that. So, and on the outside looking in, I'm a, I'm a white belt in that world. You're a black belt in both worlds, <laughs> but in that world, I'm a, black, I'm a, I'm a white belt, right? And, but I'm not naive enough to think it's just calling fights. It's, it's, it's way more than that. You know, like John Anik, motherfucker. I got a fight, motherfucker. Call me, hey Phil, man, we eating for breakfast, man. What you got going, man? Or where you shopping? Uh, what kind of draws you got on today? Yo, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. The motherfuckers get in tune with you. Laura Senko, shout out Laura Senko. I remember Laura hit me up um, on the contender. Before I got on the contender, that was like the first time I was dealing with a like, UFC personnel. And she was so in depth and like shit that had nothing to do with fighting. And that's why, you know what I'm saying? Like, where are you eating today? Where You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, where do you train outside the gym? Uh, what do you listen to? Like crazy shit. And I'm like, okay, that's way more than just watching the calm fights, play by play, knowing jujitsu. You know. So and that's and you. So you bring up Laura Sanko, and that shit broke my heart when Jamie Varner called her out. Mm. He called her out <clears throat> unfairly, and I know a lot of dudes probably think this shit because dudes just like to hear the sound of dudes talking when they talk about like Come sports on. and shit, and it's unfair. Because I'm going to tell you right now, Laura Sanko is the most versatile person on our entire staff. No, And she has to be, and I think she does it because she doesn't have that fight background. She doesn't have the UFC mm -hmm. resume like Paul Felder. 
she does more homework. She does more research. She does more than anybody on the entire staff. I know she does. Yeah, you know why I know she does? Let's yeah. go and clap it up for her real quick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, clap it up. Yeah, yeah. Clap it up. Yeah, clap it up. Clap it up for Laura's sake. Side note, is that too loud? No. Okay. Here's how I know she does more work than everyone else. And and I don't have to I don't care who's on the panel. When you're talking fighters and when you're talking fights, there's a certain bravado that men just have. There's a certain ego that we just have. You know what I'm saying? I go in the room, the first thing I see, I'm like, I can whoop his ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, yeah. I think his bitch, bro. This is what niggas say. Yeah, no, you know what I'm saying? I'm with you, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, like, yeah. man, man. I'm learning a lot. It's like, yeah, don't, hey, don't, you, don't bring your girl around. I'm learning a whole lot. Nigga, look. But, I appreciate it. But what I'm saying is, there's a certain bravado and ego men have, right? So no matter what, you like, I fought, I did this, ain't no way. You know what I'm saying? DC, like, I'm double chat, nigga, it's me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, so she knows what's being said about her. She knows who she's sitting on the desk with. You know what I'm saying? Like, she can't go to bat when it comes to wrestling or jitsu with, she gotta do the extra stuff. So it blows my mind, not just being biased, you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm, I'm team Senko. But it's like, it blows my mind when people, I hear them giving her a bad, a bad rap because motherfucker you think she don't hear what y'all saying like you think like sh she don't have these type of doubts and shit too you know yeah what right saying? yeah clearly so she's on the fucking panel you know and and the, and the other thing too man is it when it comes to jujitsu there's no one maybe dominic cruz can compete with her in terms of like the jujitsu shit but like they get to the ground, Paul Felder, and them just like, oh, them motherfuckers just need to stand up. <laughs> but Laura know exactly what, exactly the technical aspects yep. of it, because as a female in the gym, she had to be technical. Mm -hmm. She couldn't just, like, power through stuff. She had to be technical. So she's able to use that in her commentary, which I find to be brilliant. You know how to answer? Because that's a conflict of interest. You work there? We, I work there, too, but... Um... In my opinion, you can answer. Oh, who shit. is the worst in commentator opinion. in the UFC? Who, in your, in, in your opinion, who's the worst? I'm gonna let you go first. <laughs> I got it. I, 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 I know. Who, I know who I'm picking. Who you picking? And I and, and it sucks because I keep it a buck though. I'm thorough. You know, I like him as a person. Um, I love him as a fighter, but I hate him as a commentator. It's Dominic Cruz. I think he's the worst by a landslide. Why I think Dominic Cruz is the worst is because <laughs> Dominic, in the position you're in, clearly you're the ch you were the champ. Clearly you're Hall of Famer. Everybody ain't you, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you got you can't be calling fights from a standpoint of what you would do, right? And mm -hmm. how you fight. I got a smooth fucking jab. I hit a motherfucker with, my, with anybody I hit with my right hand. They they're on Queer Street every time. If I don't land it. It is what it is. But if I do, but I can't watch a, another man fight and say, why ain't he doing this? Why ain't he shoulder rolling? Why he he's very biased in how he calls fights and he always calls it from like his his perspective. Like you should do this and he should be doing this. Nigga, there's so many ways to win a fight in the UFC. Like, watch Nico Price fight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, watch yeah, Kevin Holland yeah, fight. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like I think I've seen too many fights. Charles Johnson, perfect example. Mm -hmm. He just fought uh, the Hawaiian-looking kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, watch that Joshua fight. Van. Watch that fight with no commentary. He beat the shit out of Joshua yeah. Van respectfully, jabbing him to death, walking him off. Boom, boom, boom. He never really got touched that fight. If you listen to Dominic Cruz in that fight, you would think he's getting his ass whooped until he knocks him out. Oh, Van, and then when Van's getting punched on, Dominic will be like, "Uh, well, he's setting this up." Or he's, it's just like, bro, nah, call what you're seeing, right? Mm -hmm. And and look at them like unlock characters in Mortal Kombat. You don't know who's who. Call what you see, right? right. And and give a somewhat knowledgeable analysis on what they should do. Speaking to someone that doesn't understand fighting, right? right. He should stand up on base here. He should frame. He should protect himself. Blah, 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 blah. You know, but like... I hate the way he calls fights. He's too biased, and he always looks at it from perspective as if he was in there. Yeah, I get, I get what you're saying there. Um, but I think 
for him, he you uh, he I think he knows that too, and I think he probably uses that as a strength because because it's his experience, mm -hmm. and it might not come across all that well sometimes. So when you talk about like worst and best, like for me, I don't really look at it that way because I feel like everybody has like their strength or they, their weaknesses. They do. Yeah, he's the so. only one when he's talking. It's it's like I, I hate listening to him. When I say when I hate, every time I watch him call a fight, it's like. He's before the fight start. He wants uh, some guy to win, one guy to win. Period. And he's not calling what he's seeing. He's calling from a biased opinion because he wants that other person to win. So he'll talk about this person's accolades. He'll talk about what they do. And man, he does this. Watch this. Be, tr trust me. In, in a round or two, you know what I'm saying. And like he never just calls what he's seeing on real time. I called him out on it my last fight, and then. That was my first fight, my last fight, where you seen like positive commentary on me, you know, like. But every fight before that, they ain't said shit about me. You would think I'm a, mm. I'm a bum, you know. And I went into the room and I said, I looked them all in the face. I said, look, all I ask y'all is call what y'all see. I ain't, I've been in seven UFC fights. I ain't bled yet. What are we talking about? Win, lose, or draw. I ain't getting punched on by nobody. Call what you see, you know. DC, I think DC's. I like watching DC. I think DC's very unbiased. Um, he's obviously pro wrestling, right? Um, I think Felder's very unbiased as well. But um, I just think I and I'm good with different standpoints. I'm good with DC saying being wrestler heavy, right? I'm good with Felder being get back to your feet, strike. He's losing, mm -hmm. right? Cool. But I just hate the standpoint when I'm watching a guy with a lesser skill set and you're talking through him like you know what I'm saying like he's not a black belt bro he's not you right. he can't do them things right. you know what I'm saying call what you see and leave it at that no that's fair that's fair I, I give I give 100% what you're saying and and it happens sometimes too fighters well with the commentary team they go in with a narrative like based on like when they talk to you guys or the research that they did so they do have a narrative going in and sometimes that bleeds into the into the commentary just subconsciously i don't think they do it on purpose and for dom that's the thing is if if you were to remind dom about that here's the problem if you were to remind dom about that he would just be like fuck off <laughs> it's just the way yeah, yeah it's the way i do dom. i have no problem yeah, with you yeah. <laughs> he would just be like don't he would just like, yeah no he would just be like fuck off this is the way i do it Look, I, and I, I, yeah and that's I it matter. and and hey, we all and we I'm all have our like matter. we all have our biases i have i have my bias and this is and this is where and this is where I'm gonna yell at you a little bit, because I have my bias, and this is where I got to get on you. My bias is when I see a fighter who's really fucking good and don't perform. I will fucking let him have it. Go ahead, Dean. I let Izzy had it have it last week. Go ahead, Dean. I let him Go have ahead, it, Dean, man. Bro. I was like, Go ahead. Yeah, man, because like I had so much faith in him, and I, when I have a lot of faith in a guy, and they go out and don't do it, man, yeah. it's like ah, uh, you know these opportunities don't come often like you don't you fight twice a year and if you fight twice a year you really got to go out and just put it out there and when guys don't man it really it really upsets me because i know what they're capable of 100 percent. yeah 100 and, and look and i'm i'm the polar opposite of getting offended or taking it to heart i take it all pause <laughs> I'm about to say, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, earlier he said somebody's draws. I, was yeah. like, I don't know where this is about to go. Pause. All right. And I'm cool with it, right? And I literally look for those moments to grow and feel how can I be better here? Man, I'm just trying to find peace in this fight game. That's all I want. And I, as crazy as that may sound, I don't care if win, lose, or draw. It sounds silly. But I don't care. I just want to be at peace. And how I'm at peace is me doing the best I can. That's all I want to do when I go out there. I just want to do the best I can. Let the chips fall where they may. I want to rumble the best I can. Let the chips fall where they may. I know, though, my best is elite. I know my best is top three or the best in the world. I know it. No matter what anyone tells me, I know what I can do. So for me, th those are my challenges. When I go out there and I'm not pulling the trigger. And I'm learning. I'm trying to figure out what it's going to take for me to really break through. Right? Um, I don't know. I, I hold myself accountable. I don't blame anyone but myself. 
I dumb down and get back to work and do the basics and try to figure out what the block is. I'm not I'm not scared of my opponent. I'm I'm always scared to lose the moment though. Like I've worked so hard for that moment. Walking out the crowd, the moment of the UFC, like that fight, that moment. So I'm in there and I'm like always like, all right, Phil, take all right, be smart. You know, like this is that moment, right? I don't care who the opponent is, I think about that moment too much. So I'm I'm trying to, to figure it out. Um but like I said, man, I've had, I don't know how many fights, six, five fights in the UFC, and they, they've all been six. They've been a shade of who I am. And my last fight, um, I appreciated the commentary because they, they always click over to Dean. I, Dean, how you looking, man? How, uh, what's niggas going on here? was with you the last fight, bro. Who? Everybody. What do you mean? Everybody like commentary? Commentary? Yes, yeah. Nigga, Joe, nigga, DC, yeah. nigga, nigga, yeah. nigga we yeah. was there. I'm the watching. I'm like, oh, okay. The yeah. first, they know the dog. The, they know the, the homie. The first fight. But, like, it was cool. Um, from a, a standpoint that no one understood, when they clicked over to Dean, they're like, "Dean, what you? Why, how's the fight playing out? What you feeling?" You're like, uh, "I forget what you said about Jake B. Like, man, I I just want Phil to have some more swag, man. I want Phil to, to swag a little bit more, and and motherfuckers probably don't know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? But I know what you're talking about. You I wish I wish I I heard it then. You know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> relax. You know what I'm saying? Like what I do in the gym, and I'm trying to find that happy medium. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to find it. Haven't found it yet. Yeah. It's hard, man. And like I said, it's so it's such a hard thing to do is to find a happy medium because it's elusive too. Because as as you get older, that happy medium changes. As you develop, it changes. So you have to try to capture it and change with it as you're evolving as a fighter. It's very difficult to do. And then the fact that man, you fight twice a year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not like you get every weekend to figure it out. And that you fight twice a year, so it's it's such a hard thing. So I am. I'm empathetic towards you because I know how hard it is to do, but at the same time, I'm still like, oh, of course, yeah, like, nigga, oh, no. and, I need, like, ah, and no. I need that. I need that. Like big tape. I seen in the back. He said, "Fuck you, nigga. You fucked up my parlay," and I was cool with it. It's fat ass. Fucked up everybody. Fat ass, man. Everybody that comes yeah. to sign up for the gym, I'm like, feel me coming here. He's like, man, he fucked up. <laughs> His yeah. big ass, you know, hairline. I wasn't mad at big tape. Right when I went in the back, he said, "Damn, nigga, you fucked up my parlay." I ain't give a shit, you hey, know what I'm saying? Like, listen, I needed to hear it, you yeah, know? But, you know? But the reality is, is that, I mean, everybody be like, oh, man, you fucked up my parlay, man, I bet on you I lost money. You lost money. Of course. So, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's right. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> you, lost, you lost money and momentum. So, Absolutely. like, ain't nobody lose out more than you. Absolutely. And that's And, it, and I know it hurts, man. That's why I, I, I want to help you because I know you got it. Yeah. That, that same night, Randy Brown on the card. Randy Brown on the card. I've been in the gym with Randy Brown. Randy Brown is not you. Randy Brown is my man. He's good, but he shows up. You know what I'm saying? Every Randy, time. Randy Brown shows up. Every man. Randy time. Brown shows up. I was I and and I've been. That's my brother. Shout out to Randy Brown. I've been tapped in with Randy Brown before I got in the UFC. Jamaican, just like me. He's always uh, giving me a that voice of reason in the fight game. But the thing about Randy, win, lose, or draw, I know he's comfortable with his performance because he fights man like he's mentally locked in he's there he fights like uh capoeira his last fight mm -hmm. bro that motherfucker hit him maybe twice the whole fight i'm like i look at after my fight i'm like god damn randy that nigga literally hit you maybe twice what the fuck bro mm -hmm. he was locked in that, locked in bro, only the only mistakes he made like giving up his back and some dumb shit like that but but to think about this guy in brazil he's training for however long Cutting weight, fly over here. He punched Randy's face maybe two times that whole fight. I'm like, fuck, Randy. Damn it. So what am I doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think it, Dean's tapping into what I was going to ask next is like about the mental hurdles. How do you help guys get over the mental hurdles? Because I think you was tapping into it about you having that business. And this, you know, one thing I'm really, really learning, big dog, is everybody going to be lazy. It's your job. Absolutely. It's our job to inspire them. So a real leader, will ins they won't talk about themselves. They'll leave the conversation and the other person will feel more important. So this is what I'm learning. It's like I have to make sure everybody in here feels like they are the most important person and that they can do exactly what I'm doing. That's how you get them to work like that. Like, look, this is your business. Keep going and this will be yours. Then maybe they can see because, yeah, they're going to start off that lazy. So I'm thinking maybe something like that is like helping with the mental hurdles. But I would like to ask Dean with, as far in the fight game, like, 
how do you get one past that the, the, the hurdle that's all it is it's like you blocking yourself it and, is I mean I mean it's a person sometimes it's a personality issue too because mm -hmm. people are just some people just fuck ups in life you know they just make bad decisions in life so we can't expect them to you know be a fuck up in life then show up to the fight and then just be a professional right. and start making that's good decisions fact. yeah <laughs> Cause That's they just, they just. Fact. This nigga was talking about John Jones. <laughs> <laughs> somehow, somehow he's the he's the outlier here, right? He's, he's the John is my guy. Yeah, he's the outlier. John Jones is my guy. But but most fighters, no John yeah. Jones slander ever. No, no, but most but most fighters they just it's hard for them because you know and fighting is such a, a sport that you know a lot of guys get into because they didn't make it somewhere else. It's a fact. Yeah, they. Hmm. I, I didn't make it here, so what are, I'm going to fight now, and then That's they get I did it that. there. Yeah, That's like a lot of people. I did. didn't make it in basketball. Yeah, and I started doing yeah, this. yeah. So a lot of people did, and it's kind of a fallback sport. So it, it's just very tough for fighters to really get locked in mentally, and then it doesn't last for a long time. It lasts for like you're at your peak for only a little bit, mm -hmm. and then it's like whoosh, going down. But here. I tell myself too, Dean. Like, it's so unique, man. There's nothing like fighting, right? There's nothing like it. And it's supposed to be hard. And I say, Phil, if it was easy, everybody would be in this bitch. You know what I'm saying? It's supposed to be hard. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure it out, you know? I'm on a two-fight skid. Um, Neil and then uh, uh, Jake. John, yeah, Jake. 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 And um, I got two more fights in my contract. I'm stretching the next guy. You you got to I'm, man. I'm putting you, them on ice because you got too much talent to not. I'm putting them on ice. You have you have to you have to get out there. You have to you know make sure that your game plan is tight and and your focus is there because that that was what I noticed. Like when you were on your walkout, I knew right away. I said he's not loose. He is not in the zone and what. Like you had like a little shake. You had like one little shake and then you stopped for whatever reason. You stopped. And I was like, no. And you see, like, he that's crazy that you know. That's crazy that you know because motherfuckers that don't know me, they think it's something else. Julian be begging me. He be like, Phil, please. Like, he never is giving me direction, ever. Because he know what I can do. I'm leaving next week. I'm in camp with Alex Pieta. I'm, I'm, and then I'm flying to Utah with him. You know, like, why Alex hit me up? I be punching on niggas in the gym. Man. They know what I do. You know what I'm saying? Like... And, pe and they, for years, people know what I do, you know? Julian, his begs and pleads with me. Phil, you got it. We here. Please, let's go. Come on, man. It's never, yo, get your hand up. Move, circle. Yo, come on, Harlem shake. Yeah, yeah, give him that. Yeah. We in the back. He be like, yo, Phil, come on. Let's shake it out. Come on. So when I'm in there and when people see me do this and they see, it's not me being arrogant. It's me just trying to be like, Phil, just loosen up and fucking walk this motherfucker out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like... Cause I get too locked in. I'm like, chill, chill. But Julian, my head coach, ten fights deep. Phil, please, let's go. Come on. He, he tries to get you to harm. Every right? every time. Yeah. Every whatever time. It is, man, whatever it is, like I don't know if it's a song that you need to hear, or something. Like something has to trigger you to get you into that zone of just where nothing else in the world matters, and you just have to recognize like the crowd doesn't matter, but. All that matters is you and that person in front of you, and you got to stretch them. I if my know. coach at this point, at the highest level, right, at the biggest moment, pay-per-view event, is telling me, Phil, just fucking dance. He believe in me. <laughs> yeah. He believe in what I can do. So I need to let go of, Phil, all right, catch. Now, if my coach is like, we here, pay-per-view, 302, Harlem Shakeland, walk that motherfucker up. Come on, man. Be black. Give it to him. Where, where your feet at? Yeah, then they yeah. see something, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I gotta just trust more. I used to tell Tyron Woodley the same shit, man, like in practice. Because, like, if, if he was tight, he would just, it, like, he was doing fights, he would just back up into the fence and mm -hmm. try to hit that big right hand. I said, man, go out there and talk shit. Just talk shit. Pretend you're on a basketball court and just talk shit. Facts. Because that dog shit, though. Yeah. That's the, this is what I really been learning, man. My mentor been telling me this. He said, man, look, I'm fucking a lion or even back down. You, they got lion, uh, them boys in uh, Africa that still yeah, even the yeah. he said, he said even a lion will back down, but a pit bull would rather die. He said, you got to go into dog mode. And honestly, if I didn't have to be in front of people, I wouldn't have no haircut. I wouldn't know. I know it. That's why I be knowing when Terrence Crawford gonna win. I'm mm -hmm. like, I know, honestly, bro, I can call any nigga fight.
based off where they come dressed up like. <laughs> if they come in there fly, like you not you not fucking focused. Yeah. <laughs> nah, bro, you thinking about fuck all that shit. That's what I be really want to say. I'm like, man, fuck all that shit, bro. Fuck the hair, fuck the jewels, man, beat motherfucking ass. Because I swear to God, if you do it, your family will never be in this situation. Facts. Fuck this shit. Facts. You can do it. You right there, Phil. Facts. You, we can't never make it. Facts. You right there, my nigga. Facts. Fuck all this shit. Facts. I will give you everything you need. Anything you need to set in to fuck it and beat ass. Facts. We came from nothing. Facts. These niggas can't do nothing we do. Facts. You done played against niggas in the league. The top 60 in the world make it to the league. And we compete with them every day. They not us. Facts. They not you. Dig, dig, bro. Dig. Everything you don't want to do, that's the shit you got to do. Facts. And that's what's going to take your business to the next level. But fuck, I'm realizing, bro, people got to want to be around you. That's it. That's why Dean is in the spot. Because they want to be man. around him. I want to do business with him because you know why? Even if something mess up, he going to say, hey, bro, that was on me. I got it. Yeah, I'm a, I got it. How do I fix it? I, thank you. I just want to be around somebody that's going to help me fix it. Facts. Will you help me fix it? Pre appreciate you. That's who I want to do business with. I'm going to spend the money regardless. So I'm telling you, bro, dig deep, man. People going to see what you went through. They're going to see you dig, and they're going to say, oh, I want to do that. I want to be around that. Then everything you want, you get. That's why I was like, bro, even buddy, I, did, I offered him another free private because you didn't, not to say that. I'm like, bro, we got to go. We got to go twice now. I got to double down now because we did. I get it. Stuff happened. Hey, bro, free private on me. Bring your lady, too. How much? No, she coming. Dig so they can want to be around you. And they'll give you everything. But you're in a good spot, though, because you still got a, a job. Mm -hmm. Right? So, like, all the stuff that happened before don't really matter. Those are just lessons. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, so you're in a good spot. It just wasn't your time before. So timing is everything. So now we know moving forward, now you got to make it your time. Absolutely. That's, that's the shit. And you got it, bro. Absolutely. You got it. Absolutely. You got it. When I met this nigga in real life, I said, God damn. Cause you already know we size the niggas up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so first I said, damn, I don't even know how I can get in on this nigga, Paul. I was like, yeah, I damn. Well, so and you got a video up right now, um, and I put a little fire emoji on it of you throwing the right hand, and the technique of that is perfect. It is a perfect laser right hand, and a lot of fighters can't do that. You know, everybody's been like very critical of Drikus Duplessis technique. It sucks. Yeah, we know this. But so does a lot of people's technique. Absolutely. Like most pe people's technique sucks. Absolutely. And I look for that. And I, and when I see somebody, it's actually rare that I see people do shit right. Yep. It may look like somebody's a little smoother, but the technique still sucks. So like, I'm not really hard on Drikus' technique because... I'm not either. Everybody's technique, most people's technique sucks. Yep. But when I see something done right, I'm high on that shit. I'm really high on that. I'm really like, yo, this is a that's a really good technique. And I want to see you be able to really use that and utilize that in fights. We'll get there. Because when you we'll get, get there, man, it's going to be... This, when you get there, it's going to be a wrap. Man, I was just watching your video today when you was in the uh, working pass with Lee. Mm. You had slipped a... Uh, you had, like, slipped a right quick and said, pow, pow. I said, uh-oh. That's what I started to notice. I said, all right, that's, that's it. Ain't nobody got no head movement in the UFC. No. No None. defense on that. You gotta think, and his was crazy. I haven't, I I grappled 95% of the time. Like, nine, my last camp was the first camp that I struck as much as I did. Like, in my entire career. Period. To be in the UFC, you have to grapple. It's just a fact. Whether you're grappling in the UFC or not, you cannot be there without grappling. And if you sneak your way there, you won't be there long <laughs> without mm -hmm. a guard retention or being able to protect yourself on bottom. You know what I'm saying? So I'm now training a lot more when it comes to the striking, you know, a um, hundred times more than I ever have. So like I said, I can just talk all day. I just got to get out there and show my last fight. I talked to Sean right before I left and I was like, yo, man, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get back in there. But. I don't know how hip they are to put a motherfucker that just lost back in. You know, they usually try to get keep the win streaks going. So I'm, I'm, I'm. It is what it is. You know, I'm, I'm just training twice a day as, as is, and just 
You know what I'm saying? You got the time, bro. And yeah. honestly, bro, you got the skills. I mean, you already a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. If it was me, I don't know, because I'm from the outside, I would take the Dagestani approach. I would get cold at taking motherfuckers down to the ground. Absolutely. That's it. Strike, strike down to get them down, and then beat ass. But that's because I, I worked at a jail, so I ain't beat up. No <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't fought no professional fighters, but that was my whole shit. You, you get inside, flight school, who? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, like, that's... And people just fall in love with striking because it's sexy. Striking is sexy. Right? Absolutely. Like when you knock a motherfucker out, it's sexy. So people fall in love with that. But the easiest way to really avoid damage is to put somebody down. It's right? a Sean Brady yeah. motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that nigga, that nigga had Kevin Gaston like he was on ice. Yeah, <laughs> like that shit was Second the weird floor. That shit I'm, was the weirdest. I was there. I'm like, is this nigga feet wet? Is, is he stepping all for the fight? Like, well, I mean, that was all design. I've been working with Brady for a minute. I'm that's why I'm leaving to go kick with him tomorrow. I'm going really? to fight with him. Yeah. Okay. Wait, uh, which fight? Uh, Burns. He's fighting Gilbert Burns mm. in a week. It's not a week. The seventh. Yeah, Brady yeah. Burns is in a in a week. Wow, I forgot about that shit. Wow, that's a crazy fight. That's a yeah. That's a great fight. That's a great fight. Um, fight. damn, that's a great fight. Mm -hmm. I know, and and I felt bad too because I did a little bit of work with Gilbert and we're friends, you know. But I was like, man, Brady is my guy. Now, yeah, and yeah. I've been working with him for a yeah. minute. But you know Gilbert, Gilbert is pohada anytime, anybody, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 I, you know what? And I was a gentleman about it, too. Like, I, yeah. I hit him up and was like, hey, man, listen, I know we cool, but, you know, I'm working with Brady. Yeah. Is we good? He was like, nah, we good. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. he's like, he's like a Neil Magny yeah. in this game, you know? But, um, damn, that's a good fight. Um, ah, it's a tricky fight because, ah, it's tricky. I don't know. Yeah, it's my, I don't know. You never know, man. Like that's just the thing with fights, man. Fight. That's a, that's such a thing with I, fights. Look, you just, I, I you don't, don't know. I have no idea who to call in that fight, bro. It's so tricky because it can go. If Gilbert really locks in, so I'm grappling. I don't understand why look, niggas don't do that. Because he's because he's crazy. I don't but, understand why. But look, if Gilbert, striking is sexy. Oh, if Gilbert locks in and says I'm grappling, I don't give a fuck who you are. We forget because he throws punches from his hips that. Gilbert is that nigga on the ground, yeah. right? We really forget. And if he really says, no, no, I'm grappling this fight, period. I don't give a fuck who you are. It's going to be a rough night. And you got, you better be on your P's and Q's, whether you can wrestle or not, whether you got jitsu or not. He has an elite level of jitsu. But I think his jitsu is always like an ace for him. You know, he's like, ah, if I need it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, Hosma, nope, guard retention. What are you doing? Butterfly hook, get off me. You know? But Brady... Is a Julian type ish, ish, control your hips, mm -hmm. ish, ish, climb, kata katami. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like very static, uh, methodical, mm -hmm. break you down. You know, so I don't know, man. It's tricky. I like I like the way you broke you broke that down because that is like Julian and Brady kind of have similar. They do. Like, I would love yeah. to see him. Look, I've never rolled with Sean Brady. I've obviously never fought him. Um, I know exactly what it, he feels like in a grappling sense. Pause. I know. Because I can just tell. I know. I know. Training with Julian for so long, yeah. I know exactly what he... And when everyone talks so highly of Sean, and and look look what he's doing. I tell people the same thing about Julian. I'm like, I'm t I, know, I know his game. I know exactly what it's like. I know what it's like because it's Julian's game. I already know what he feels like. He feels like a fucking heavyweight, a shit ton of bricks. He has crazy... I six symmetric holes. Mm -hmm. His his clamp on his thighs is probably on a thousand. Mm -hmm. This is probably a thousand. I watched him grapple Craig, and he literally body locked Craig in Craig's guard, and they just sat there for eight minutes. For uh, with the Brady fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He just so like, Craig <laughs> yeah. Craig closed his closed guard. Brady had a body lock on his guard mm -hmm. uh, on on his waist, and they just sat there. He never opened. Yeah, and I and I and that's Craig, you know. So and granted, they could there was no leg locks, but still, that's hard to do. Right. So, I'm I'm just a fan. I'm gonna watch that fight. I have yeah. no idea. Man, there was a time two years ago I thought Gilbert Burns was the best welterweight on the planet. Damn, I never yeah. thought that. Was <laughs> I did. I really did. I was like, I did too. Yeah, like I did too. Because his skill set, like he's he got he 
punches hard. Kicks hard. He works hard. He works hard. He's a hard, like he's, he got that dog works, in him. Man. I thought he was like two years ago. I was like he just needed the right opportunity, but that was two years ago. Right. And he's he's thirty eight now, so I'm kind of like. For me, for me, <laughs> for me, I look at like I look at fighting different, and I'm a fighter, so I can speak on it. I look at fighting like when I see. For me, I look at skill sets different. I don't give a fuck about your offense you know what i'm saying i look at like defensively how how are you your footwork how are you like little things like do you not escape mount like do you stand up on base correctly like a lot of people just be in that bitch fighting you know what i'm saying like and for years i, w- I was always high on like certain guys albert tuminoff i always said he was mm-hmm. fucking phenomenal he's good roy mcdonald phenomenal leon edwards phenomenal like those guys are very good Martial arts. I don't care what win, lose, or however it is. The motherfuckers are great at fighting. Gilbert, I I love him as a person. Great guy. Uh, he's attained probably millions of dollars at this point. But when I would watch him, his strike, I'd just be like, ah, motherfucker, be throwing. I'm like, that, he couldn't hit me if his life depended. On. He'd have to grab me, bro. Like, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not swinging from here, closing your eyes, holding your breath. <gasps> It's not pretty. <laughs> like it's not. Hey, it's, it's, it's not, not pretty. Not it's not pretty. But Grab me, but, but, he, me cool. but he can club right. you, man. It's not pretty, but it's he, not he can club. Not happening. I mean, that bitch like Peter Parker. Like, I just, you know, I be honestly trying to watch like they training sessions. This is how I'm gonna judge the whole fight. Like, cause what happens is like at a certain point, it's, it'll become like chess masters going, and mm-hmm. you know, shit. Monk, somebody might not win at all, but what happens is somebody might get tired and make a mistake. I'm looking for the person. Who, when they get they get like Izzy, he just look like he got tired. Like, like, dog, you should get a nigga your back. Look, yeah, here, here, oh. here's what's crazy about Izzy. Fuck? Here's what's crazy. Put the fuck here's what's crazy. Here's what's crazy. I'm the UFC matchmaker. You wouldn't know who certain niggas are. Period. If I'm if I'm the matchmaker, certain niggas you wouldn't even heard of them. They be at Lowe's. Nigga be at Lowe's like this. <laughs> I'm dead ass, bro. Let me be the matchmaker, bro. Let me be the matchmaker. <laughs> homeless. No, I used to fight in the UFC. Yeah. <laughs> you mean I'm niggas? Cause, bro, I, look, I love him to death. I, I, it's just stylistic match. Like, for instance, Alice Pierre, I love him to death. They're they're going to look at his last four fights. Like, they're putting niggas in front of them that want to stand here and do this. And here's the dumbest thing that these fighters don't get. Cut that bravado shit out. Cut that ego shit out. If you were to fight him in glory, do you know what the fucking odds would be on you and whooping him? Mm-hmm. It'd be like plus 7,000 or whatever the fuck. You, you wouldn't win. <laughs> Motherfucker, he done fought 70-something people. He lost to four of them. Or some dumb shit like that. Amateur and pro. There's like 70-something motherfuckers he beat, amateur and pro, put together. He lost to like five of them. You ain't going to be that 70, you ain't going to be the sixth nigga, man. So, like, we don't think, they don't, these guys don't think. Like, Izzy, Izzy got over 100 fights on his feet. What the, grab that nigga, man. Don't yeah, stop yeah, until yeah, he gets yeah. down on the back. Grab him, jump, close guard, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you doing? You're yeah. not going to be the guy to beat him. Yeah. Dude, Wonderboy Thompson. He has over a hundred kickboxing bouts. He was undefeated, wasn't he? Yeah, he was undefeated. Undefeated. You're not gonna yet. beat a nigga to beat someone on his feet. Yeah. Grab and that. MMA, like you, like you think your MMA striking was gonna beat Wonderboy? You're, you're not gonna, gonna be the guy. Yeah. I only know and, Jiu-Jitsu. And, and, and Dana, I that nigga. And Dana and Hunter know historically, it's a couple cameras in this nigga face. Shit talking back and forth, and your goofy ass is standing on him. And we got a pay per view that somebody's getting knocked out, and people want to watch. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So like Alex, striker, 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 striker. Like, Khalil ain't gonna grab him. Khalil gonna stand in front of him, locate, 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 gonna check on him. Curtains. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> look, and look, I, I know, man, yep. But look, think about it though. Like, just think about the and and, and what blows my mind is this. Like, J- Jamal, I love you to death, man. Like, you got you got so many wins and like you fought for the belt, you were world champion, but like it was just a not a smart thing to do, bro. Like, fuck everything. MMA is this ain't kick- no, it's the same shit, nigga. It's just same the same exact shit with mm-hmm. smaller gloves. Mm-hmm. If you and him were to kickbox, 
they wouldn't sanction that event because this nigga got almost a hundred fights and you got two. Mm -hmm. So why the fuck are you gonna go out there on some? Come on, I don't grab that man. Yeah, I don't get. Hey, I don't get grab it him. Like I said, like you don't get these opportunities. They don't come every weekend. Oh. Like why are you squandering these opportunities? Grab yeah. that man. Man yeah. said squander. Yeah. Grab yeah. him. Izzy, grab him yes, immediately. Yes. When the bell rings, run, sit on your butt and butt scoot the <laughs> Fuck what I'm talking about. Alex Pieta, grab him, jump guard. What are you doing? Do something. Yeah. You're not gonna jump be the guard, guy that fucking down. <laughs> oh I got him. Oh no, nigga. Hang. Yeah. <laughs> the nigga power is a hundred on a UFC. I game. said, yo, yeah, I said when when Sean, when Sean Strickland fought uh Alex and they was like he's gonna stand with him, he's gonna stand with him. And I told okay. I told Anthony Smith, we sat and watched it together, I said there's no way in hell he's that stupid to do that. Bro. I said, he's, there's no one that stupid. And Anthony Smith said, he's that stupid. And what did he do? He was that stupid. Bro, I couldn't believe it. Bro, literally, watch that fight. I, Alex was like, he was like, did this nigga prank at me? Yeah, like, he was like, what the <laughs> he was like nervous. Like, this nigga, he, he think this nigga wants to be on some like, like confetti or some shit. He like faint in front of him. He like. What the fuck this nigga doing? He about to grab him? <laughs> no, he, he actually jabbed him one time. He was like, Hink? <laughs> hink? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like, Hink? <laughs> he <was> like, hink? <laughs> Think about, look at Alex. Alex has been in wars with these niggas in Russia in, in glory, fighting his heart, all kind of crazy ass fight. You were in front of him, awesome. Alex literally was like, like, there's no way he's trying to stay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, bro, I don't, I don't get it, nigga. I don't, I don't get it, man. Yeah, they're gonna have to bring in somebody from Russia that's a heavy grappler. Nah, look, I, I keep it a buck. Dagestan, Uzbekistan, whatever stand, keep them niggas over there. If you ain't got a mustache, you can't fight on the roster. Look, and them niggas don't give a no fuck, bro. Neither. They ain't no, none of, nothing's getting to their head. That bell ring, they're running at you, they're grabbing you, they put you down, they punch you. And the fight is over. Look, I keep it a buck. I don't care how anybody call it. Every weight class, a Russian, if they let them niggas in, champions. Every, every yeah, I know. Top 10. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying, <laughs> yep. Just follow It'd be no diversity. It'd be no diversity. I mean, think, think about it, man. Like, they hold them back for so long when they get there. Like, how it took it took Islam a long-ass time before he got the title shot. True. Same thing with Umar. No one wanted to fight him. Now they got, they undeniable now. They gonna think be about and how many right. niggas they got in the crib like that. You know who's raw that nobody know about? I think they all cousins. They like they like niggas. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, Khabib's cousin that just got signed on Contender, the heavyweight. You seen him? I ain't seen him. No. Just thinking. Runs over. Come here. <laughs> it's a heavyweight. Khabib. Done. Yeah. Finger. Oh. Runs over. Grabs him. Bing. Fight over. And it's like. Yeah, why don't you try Get that? Over why don't you try that, Phil? You got, you got. Look, I ain't from, I ain't from Uzbekistan. But you got, uh, <laughs> but, but look, I'm, a, I'm gonna tell you, I, I'm gonna tell you what it is. That dude was on steroids, hundred percent. How you know? I saw him. He was on PFL, hmm. like this. <sighs> I don't know who he is, so I could talk about him. So I ain't saying his name. I don't know. I'll show you who he's after. Like this, PFL, chest here, out here, like that. He's on. I think it was like two hundred five or nah. It was heavyweight. He came with a contender, a little pudge. He had to clean out that his system before he got in the pool. Uh, little, you know yeah. what I'm saying? A little man titties. Look, ran over to him. I'm like, well, who the fuck is that? Like, Khabib's cousin. I'm like, oh my god, get this nigga out of here. But he's in the UFC now. This was like, I think it was last week or the week before. Yeah, man, them dudes are scary. Yeah, man. Like his other cousin, what's his name? Uh, Usman. He got the coldest name in the game. The one the that champion, just fought, Sandy, or the one from Bellator. The one in Bellator yeah, yeah, just beat Jason Jackson. All fired. Usman Nurmagomedov. Yeah. Damn, they all fired. They cold. I do. We and might they all got like, out. They I all don't like, know, right? Honestly, so I've really been thinking about like starting a little program because I'm like, all right, because um, I see what Bo Nichols gonna do. I'm like, all right, this is it, really. If you can get heavy into wrestling, and wrestling just gives you like you just get like forged in the furnace of. Well, they're, they're, yeah, they're just used to being tougher. Right? That's, that's all. That's yeah. all it is. So what I've been thinking about is trying to get like a young, uh, like a young wrestler, maybe in high school, and then take him and do boxing about three, four years because ain't nobody got no head movement. Yeah. And then, and then get give him 
you know, I, hopefully he was doing wrestling from the time he was like six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mm -hmm. Gave him like 10, 15 years of wrestling. And then boxing, like you said, it only take about for us because we grow up fighting our cousins all the time. Fuck all the yeah. bullshit. We just need to get we just need to get Caden right from now. But we just need to get him right. Talking about my, my nephew. He gonna be. He already rich. Bro, he Phenom. Like, he like Richie Rich. Phenom. He nah, he is. Phenom in jitsu, doing jitsu. For well, that's so. Here's my thing, man. I think jitsu is going to be the next thing that's going to stop the bag of standards. Mm. <clears throat> you think? I do. I do believe it, so, man. I, I, I do hope. Believe, I, I do pray. Believe. Fuck him. But the problem is, no one, no <laughs> one has faith in it. So after Corey Sanhagen's fight, and I, I probably timed this wrong and shit. After Corey Sanhagen's fight, I said, "Did you not have like an answer? Like if you did get taken down, because mm -hmm. I, I thought you did a good job getting back to your feet. It took a little long sometimes, but you did a good job of doing that. But you still lost. Mm -hmm. Did you not have an answer if he did take you down?" Oh man, you know, my goal was just to get back to my feet. But what if you have an answer if they take you down? Like mm -hmm. a le a legit fucking answer. Not just push them away and get back up, but a legit answer to where they don't want to take it. Look at when Hamza fought Gilbert. Mm -hmm. He got on top of Gilbert. Gilbert was like, whip, whip, whip. Yeah. Hey, what did Hamza do? Tom's like, nah, nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that? He yeah. was like, hey, take that. Hey. That, was, so that was the best takedown defense. Whooping that ass. Yeah, whooping right. that ass. So that's right. my thing. But no one but no one really wants to be the guinea pig and go, all right, I'll be the first motherfucker to do it. But instead, what everybody's more willing to do is just push, give up their back, have a motherfucker uh, hang on. I've, I mean, I despise that position with my life, God, man. I damn. hate watching that from both perspectives i hate watching that i'm just like oh talk about slowing the fucking yeah. fight down Bruh. worse than anything it's like fuck you know I'm, who it has to be it has to be Cade rotolo somebody that's, Rotolo. that's what i'm talking about that's what i'm talking hey we need you dog that's, we need them leg locks that's man. that's what i'm talking about these russians about that, here, that's man. what i'm talking about take a take a guy like that right it will be it will be okay that dynamic with that diversity it'll be a don't take him that submission and don't take him to floyd yeah. so Kader, Kader, floyd or whoever the top boxers in the mm -hmm. world like get him some real yeah it'll be kate entire fighting now mm -hmm. it'll be them yeah it'll be it'll be that's like the the uh, it has to be that that elite elite world class threat from everywhere that's what I, that's my point you know when you can threaten them from everywhere on the ground Ooh, take me no down. one's going to want to be down with right. yeah but that's what i'm saying and give him that's what i'm trying to say i'm trying to mold like give him that and we do boxing give him a world class boxing for three four years they don't take 20 years like no, no, just no. yeah three four Some years good defense be able to see punches and shit. I'm, all of that he, he, he quick boom yeah. i seen little jit that came from technique over at fusion Smacking everybody, yeah. legit. Yep. Leota included. Yep. Couldn't nobody touch you. And I said, man, how long you been training? He's like, man, three years. Black kid. Yes. With a little thing. With the, yeah. Yeah. He said Bro, three years. And what's crazy is he was at Fusion first, and he was gonna do MMA, and then he kind of just like, oh, I want to do the boxing. He like twenty three, but his ex, his growth. Bro, you can't touch him. Can't nobody in the gym touch but him. But like, he, he literally went from like a kid, like a nineteen year old kid that was like, oh, I want to fight MMA, then he just strictly stuck to boxing, and now he's like. He got. He still got a long way to go, but like his jump has been just exponential. But for sure, yeah, for boxing he'd be great. MMA, yeah. nah, because it's so right. much that that grappling. There's no way you can bypass. Nah, I mean, come here. 15, 20 years. Two shakes, two, two, yeah, kicks, yeah, yeah, two kicks yeah. to your shin, yeah. grab it, body yeah, lock. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, ah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't bypass that, bro. Like knowing exactly, like you yeah. said, having a game plan, knowing exactly what to do. That's where it's like I've done jujitsu so long, bro. I keep telling people I be most of the time people want to come and sign up. I can always tell when they got this look in their eye. And it's always the blur, the brothers. No, no lie. I'll put them, I'll show you on the on the on the on the, on the recording. He was about 250, 260. So I'm giving him the tour, but I can see it in his eye. Most people, I don't gotta ask them to ever get on the mat. They just gonna wanna sign up. Yeah. I say, but uh, but you wanna see if it worked too. He said, Yeah, bro, I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Yeah. I do, I you know what I'm saying, I do wanna see if it worked. So me, like I said, I've been scraping people my, for years. Like I said, especially from working in that jail, I'm sharp, sharp. All right, so I say, man, we go on the mat, and again, it's not. I'm not fighting him. I'm not thinking we about to fight. I know you big, but you don't pause. <laughs> okay, yo, that was wild. I know you a larger dude, right? So what you don't want is to get pushed. Yeah. So as soon as I start pushing him, he put mm, arm drag, ankle pick, bam. And now as soon as he hit the ground, it's. Guard pass, knee on belly. He pushed up on his back. Yeah. No, 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 no. 
And I go knee yeah. on belly so they want to push. You know what I mean? They either uh, gonna push the knee or they gonna push up on the chest. It's yeah. the same shit every yeah, time. Every time. Boom. So he push up. I pop. It's the same shit. I'm like, bro. And he keep thinking. I said, bro, because I'm not fighting you. Mm -hmm. I already know. I already know exactly what you finna do. I did this. I done this for 20 years. And, but you knew and you had the answer for Come on. every little thing that he was going to do. Yep. But that's my point with fucking with MMA. These guys don't come up with the answer for like those basic positions. Mm -hmm. They just still allow, still just push, allow them to just get fight. back. And just fight. I'm like, did you not come up with a fucking solution for this? No. Yeah. No, because they're just fighting. Yeah, they just still fighting. Just, 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 I'm just in here just fighting. Like, bro, you got to outsmart. Fighting ain't about fighting. It's about being smarter than the man. When God said, I give you power and dominion when he made the man, I had to go back and see what was power, and Farrakhan had to break it down to me. <laughs> he did. He said, oh, man, I easy, love me easy some on Farrakhan. Farrakhan. He got Arsenio Hall canceled, man. Did, did he? he? I love me some Farrakhan. 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 Farrakhan.
But I never am offensive. Like, so you heard what he just said? That's what he's saying. You yeah, and that's my deficiency. And, and, and it has to be a repetition of me actively attacking. You just have to rehearse the it. takedown. Yeah, or, you got to rehearse it's it. Just yeah. rehearse. Because like literally, my favorite place to it sounds crazy. My most comfortable place to be. Niggas can think I'm crazy. In my clothes guard, period. Yeah, I don't is, care. I'll crazy. fight anybody in the world. My weight class. We start in the middle of the octagon. I'm here. That's where I'm the most comfortable. It sounds crazy. No, it does not I, sound crazy. It's just where I'm comfortable. Look, and I'm not saying I'm fucking Damian Maya there. That's just where I'm really comfortable. I'm really comfortable. Body lock. Up on the cage. So it's like, Phil, I never see you in those two positions often. I don't know why, right? I don't, I don't aggressively attack the body lock on the cage enough. I get the body lock on anyone. They get taken down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't want to say homie name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, but, I, yeah, I know what And, and Julian's like... Same thing, like nigga. Then why don't we get there? Why? I don't know. <laughs> well, well, so here, information. Maybe we got here, no. Here's why. Information, but you don't have enough payoff. You need more payoff. Mm. You need more. You need more ability to finish, and have confidence in that finish of what comes after that takedown. Mm -hmm. mm. Because so that's and that's one of the reasons why wrestlers like oh. I don't want to waste my energy taking them down, but fuck, man, if I get you down, I'm going to finish you. Joe Mershaw said that if I get anybody down, I'm going to finish him. Fine. He's got, he's got, in 35, 37 finishes, he's got 29 submissions. Fuck! That's 29 three. submissions. Shout out to and GM3. And six, yeah. and six knockouts. <laughs> in 37 fights, in 37 wins, he's got 35 finishes. He's got a payoff. Right, so he's getting to these spots where he knows that there's a big payoff at the end of it. Mm. Not just holding on to somebody's right. back and just right. thinking, all right, I'm going to wear him down. He knows that there's a payoff. So if you get your spots, go close guard, body lock, and you know that there's a big payoff at the end of it, you're going to be more willing to go there. Yep. So you just need to find more payoffs. Mm. That's it. Mm. Just top your head. Shit, man. Caden said he, uh, my boys, they out in Vegas right now for the Jiu-Jitsu Con. Uh, they was at Tim Planet, and uh, he said, "Man, Kate endorsed everybody." I said, "What brown belts, black belts?" But we've been drilling this. I said, "Bro, it's the same." She says, "The same shit every time." I said, "When you pass guard, they gonna push. Mm -hmm. He hitting it just like Kate, bro." So I mean, like he's saying, just rehearse situations. Rehearsal, yeah. yeah, that dudes are doing on the same on a regular basis, regular basis, regular basis, and just rehearse, 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 and they gonna do the same thing the day of the fight. Right, and, and that's what I'm. That's what I'm noticing. He sent me a video, but my little homie boo passing the guard, dude about to put. He jumped that hole. I said, "Huh." <laughs> <laughs> I sent him up there. I sent him up there. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, he called yeah, me. He yeah, called yeah, me, yeah. man. My mentor. He said, "Man, thank you for introducing me." He told me. He said, "Thank you for introducing me to Phil, man." Cause, uh, man, I knew Phil was a good dude, bro. I didn't even really know this man. We, I was like, let's go. Uh, we went to like Planet Smoothie just to chop it up. And he had bought my little. He's like, "Bro, I got you." I was like, you got your little point. That's really, 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 really. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, but I was like, because <laughs> you said that a little while, bro. Yeah, I did say that. Yeah, you know what I, I'm I, saying? It came out wrong, man. I'm <laughs> sorry. Being in the throat. It, 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 I didn't come out the way I wanted. No, no, no. But speaking, of, but speaking of smoothie, let's take a break. Shout out to A Game. Shout out to A Game. Best oh, hydration in the game. It's got electrolytes and all kind of stuff in it. So, yeah, make sure y'all check out this A Game. Special grapes for the, the grape one. I ain't gonna say it. <laughs> the grape flavor for niggas. Yeah. Why they had you know, why, yeah, why they had a watermelon? <laughs> watermelon soon. <laughs> nah, that'd be OD. But the grape one is actually incredible. Man, make that watermelon. You better yeah, play. What you talking about? Man, chicken flavor, do it all, bro. Get that money. <laughs> man, get that money, bro. Because I'm telling you, this is what I'm really learning about. They're consumers, man. Most of the world is consumers. They're going to spend the money anywhere. So your Chanel bag is better than it going to help me feed my family or build something greater, a legacy, buy some houses so that we can put up sexual, you know, assaulted victims so they can have somewhere to stay. Like, think about the money, you, what you could do with that money. All right? It's just a tool. So, yeah, I sell it all. Sell it all. Make all the money you can. Get all the value you can. Take somebody else gonna do. They gonna spin it somewhere. That's a whole home. fact. You know they gonna throw it, throw it away. That's a whole fact. Dean, what you got going on, man? 
Man, I just my movie's in uh, in rotation now. My film, I've got a short film out that's in Yo, rotation now. What, t- talk to us. Yeah, what man. Film? Yeah, it's what, called, what it's called Brotherhood. It's called Brotherhood, and um, we just won a uh, best short film in the Newark Independent Film Festival. Hey, yes, sir. So, yeah, let's it's that go. Eve Edwards and uh, Rashad Evans is in it. Let's and, go. Uh, and it's different too, man. I, you know, when we do a Florida premiere, y'all got to come because it's it's strong. It's not like Can what you I, think is it, it on is. Prime. No, it's not even that. It's just we doing the, we doing the um the film festival circuit first. Damn, can so we can't lady? watch it. Is there any way? <laughs> is there any way you can send me the file so I can, I can watch see, it? I, I can try. Yeah, yeah. I, I won't. Yeah. Won, you. That's no, 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 no. I hear you. I hear you. Do that. Yeah. Let me talk to. Let me talk to okay. the director. See if I can. Awesome. Y'all remember yeah. LimeWire? Hey, Lime I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, whole movie, nigga. Nigga, look. I'm 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 the most trustworthy nigga. Craig Jones. Shout out Craig Jones. Craig Jones sent me the pilot to his document uh his uh is it a series it was it's not a docu i think it's a docu series no it's not a docu series but he sent me the pilot to it that shit's like three hours long damn and i gotta wild out of course i ain't gonna do that i watched the pilot gave him my opinion on it and that was it and they you know sent it to who nobody nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but look but that's crazy that he did that you know what i'm saying that's crazy that he he but he know i'm a trustworthy motherfucker but right. he literally sent me the pilot to it and Incredible, like yeah. Have you ever acted? Before? Incredible, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you do that. Yeah, no, this I nigga do, is yeah. like I Master plays, P, bro. Yeah, he's do, like he's yeah. everything. He is, wow. He's I've literally, plays, yeah. yeah, bro. Okay, you did plays, plays first, bro. Uh, yeah, wow. bro. This nigga is Everybody Master else, yeah. P. He's literally like, I'm, I'm inspired by this motherfucker. Stand up comedy acts, literally all the shit that I be saying I'm gonna do, he do it. How did you start? <laughs> What, to get in acting? Yeah. Class, man. Like an acting class or yeah. improv? j he got like, with, he started, act, yeah. Like, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I started with acting class, and then when my, you know, fighting is just tough to, like, do both. Mm-hmm. So doing improv was a little bit easier to manage. Right. You know, just get up there and kind of act the fool. But, right. But, um. And so, yeah, yeah so, so man, I, I, I used to play the guitar. I, I be in here playing sometimes. Yeah. But I had a band. And when we would get on stage, we would play a song, and then we, but we sound like everybody else, right? Which is, thank you, this next song is this, <laughs> right? Thank you. And then I was like, bro, so we got to set ourselves apart. So I started to write a play where I would have, like, all the rappers. It was a barbershop thing. Mm-hmm. But I have, like, all, oh, like, you are a rapper, a poet, or a comedian, you would be in the barbershop. And the musicians would be the barbers. And so mm. we would have... We would talk about whatever, whatever, and then the conversation would lead into a song. Mm-hmm. So let's say, like, we were talking about, um, like, when people, all the, the black brothers were getting sh- shot on camera, right? We were talking about, like, black unity or black power. And I have Op getting his hair cut, and then I could eventually be like, man, fuck up, man, man, I'm tired. And then, like, white light come down on just him. He do the monologue. Oh, that's and brilliant. And then we go and play our song. Yeah. So I started to try to find acting classes here, but all I could find was improv, which is, like you say, it's cool. But it's more so like they just trying to make jokes the whole time. Yeah, no, I, 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 I want to learn. I improv, is, yeah. improv is different from acting because improv is it's like recess in school, right? You right. know what I'm saying? It's a lot of play, and there's right. different styles of it. But I mean, it's 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 a different skill, right. Than acting, like acting is like like creating characters and really diving in. I mean, it's 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 hard, man. Yeah, see, that's easy. what I want to figure yeah, out how yeah, to do. So right. I went to a couple of improvs, but then like I said, it was just weird. And it was like this ain't God. I was like, nah. Yeah, that's it's a little different. Okay, but I'm sure Orlando has a lot of acting classes. Too. Has to, yeah, has, yeah, has Orlando has to. Where'd you I, take yours? I was doing mine in South Florida. Yeah, South so, Florida. Okay, South South Florida. South Florida. So, okay. It's like LA. It's like New York. Yeah, it's it's like, yeah. Never mind. It's up, so <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I know, but I know you was talking about doing that stuff. So I was like, man, I want to get you in something. A hundred percent. I already started writing uh, my stand-up bit, mm-hmm. um, and I have high level comedian friends. High level. Shout out to Preacher Lawson. Mm-hmm. My brother. Preacher Lawson. Shout out Preacher Lawson. And um Preacher literally says, Phil, you are funnier than most comedians I know. And he's like, you can do this. I'm just letting you know that. He's he told me that. And he is chilling right now. I don't know if you see where he at. His bank account look nice right now. I'm sure. So and I'm not trying to do it as a career, you know, but I want to do it. This is something that I I enjoy that mm-hmm. I want to do. So what he told me to do was um talk about myself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell it's a five minute set that I'm gonna do. Um and I'm gonna do it at the Orlando Improv 
Uh, shout out to my buddy Kermit. Um, so it's essentially me telling a story of the toughest Your man I've ever had in my life. first going to be at the Orlando Improv? Yeah, my buddy runs it, Kermit. This man is wild. I have to. Like, there, there's no way. of an open mic? I'm, I, there's no point to do that because okay. Kermit runs. Yeah, if you can get in, you might as well just jump yeah, in. And yeah, and then my buddies are like, dude, Preacher's my boy. Nigga yeah. just had a residency. Like, he's on tour right now. It's like, my homies are them niggas. So it's like, that's you what they... You wouldn't recommend hitting like a little open mic or something and rehearsing? No. I'm... I'm no, I, and and then I mean, probably that... I've been there a bunch of times. Like, yeah, you're right. Because yeah, yeah. Sometimes, cause sometimes, like, I've done open mics before and it's just... A bunch of other comedians standing around that's waiting to go be. up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. and like no one, jokes. like no one's paying attention to you. It's just yeah. like it's it's. I mean, it's it's a good practice, like to to talk into a microphone. Right? I'd rather it's be a good that, practice, yeah. but like if you really want to do it, I rather you need be that people on, on dates. Do it, yeah, you know what I'm saying. I want motherfucker that that haven't been on a date in three months because they work and they didn't see me. Okay, so they like critical. Okay, like nigga, you better. You know what I'm saying? So, but the story <laughs> is what what I'm telling is essentially the hardest fight I've ever had in my life, right? And the fight I had that was the toughest, and it's this guy I fought named James Jones. Shout out to James yeah, Jones, James me and him Jones. still friends. Um, and I just say how everybody got a James Jones, mm. right? So this is a guy in uh, West Virginia. They had hit me up, the promoter hit me up in West Virginia. It's West Virginia, man. Like, what are talking about? I'm fighting anybody. <laughs> like, who want what? So he's like, yo, Phil, we got a boxing match for you. <laughs> who? Oh, he 40. I said, run it. <laughs> Fuck you talking about? I'm 23. Old, man. Yeah, I beat the shot this old dude. Well, wait, I don't care. You just tell me what, when I got to be there. I'm not. I'm doing jitsu and a gi. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to pull up and beat this dude the fuck up. It's that simple. <laughs> so fast forward, I get to Charleston, West Virginia a couple weeks later. I bring like a jitsu guy with me. And uh, it's like the city hall, the old city hall. But it's like abandoned, but it's super clean. They just got a bunch of janitors in there just like keeping the place up kept. But they have fights in there. Mm -hmm. So I'm warm, I'm in the back now and do the medicals. I'm warming up, and I'm I'm there to punch on a forty year old man from West Virginia. He won in he was like four and like nineteen or some shit, some dumb shit. I don't know. He had bad record. So <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm hitting pads, and I see a guy. He in the back. He like mopping. He in the back, dude. He mopping. He, he said, you fighting James? I said, yeah. He said, he said uh, damn, I shouldn't be all right. See, this is why I got to practice. Cause I'm, when, I'm, mm -hmm. when I do it, I'm not going to be laughing. <laughs> but he mopping. And he's like, do you fighting James? Like, yeah. He's like, I'm trying to knock him out. And I'm like, and he just keep mopping. And I'm just like, I'm about to smoke this old dude. Like, what the fuck he talking about? Don't knock him out. Don't try to knock him out. That makes sense to me. I'm about to, I look at him, the nigga look old, bro. Head that big, landing strip, gray. I'm I'm like, is this a joke? I'm about to beat the <laughs> shit out of this nigga. And I don't care. He signed a contract. I'm here to get my 400 bucks and beat him the fuck up. <laughs> we, we go out there. And with my $400. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, we go out there. My big payday. We go out there. Fight start. I'm dancing, dancing. I jab him. Jab again. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whoa. Go to clinch. Uh, get off me. <clears throat> oh, shit. <laughs> Nigga punching on me, bro. <laughs> punching on me. Holding him. Trying to get him off me. <laughs> All body shots. Oh, I'm here. Now I'm Floyd. I'm just tired. I'm just checking my body. Get off me. Yo. <laughs> I'm hurt. Sitting down. My buddy, he a jitsu, he don't know what to tell me. He just put ice in my <laughs> I look over. You got a flying arm bar. I think I look over. Arm. His son. He ain't old now, huh, nigga? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See? And that's what I was gonna ask. So, look, they talking shit to me. I was talking to my friend. I said, bro, I ain't never called him old. He said, Phil, you gotta focus. I said, all right, all right, let's go, let's go. Yeah, nigga, yeah. And then he come out. His dad come out, Southpaw. Oh. 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 I'm like, no. Oh. oh, my God. Oh, oh. 
Huh, huh, grabbing him. Back up, close my eyes. Fiend! Right hand. Down on the knee. Huh. I dropped him. Mm. He went down, he stood right back up immediately. It don't matter, it's a standing eight. I needed that. Yeah, you know, getting punched that, on. Yeah. <laughs> huh. I'm like, huh. Whew. Three. Huh. I'm good. Now I, I'm just up this round. I'm winning this round. I'm, so I lost the first round. I'm winning this round. I have to be winning because I just dropped him. So I'm just kind of moving, moving, jabbing. He's southpaw. I don't know what to do. Jabbing, grabbing me. Fast forward. I want. I want to ruin my my little bit I got. But fast forward. I went. I went a majority split. I almost lost to this motherfucker. <laughs> and Dean, when I tell you the elation, I had. Fuck the contender. Fuck. I never felt like I felt when I won that fight. We stopped at Arby's, nigga. I'm just like, yeah. Arby's? <laughs> wow. I'm like, he was the Arby's. Four hundred dollars. He gave me cash. So I was like, I felt great, bro. Like, bro, I was 0-2 as a pro MMA fighter, and that was my second pro boxing match. I was two and zero. I was thirteen zero as an amateur, two and zero pro, and. I was just, I felt great, but you couldn't tell me nothing. Like, I was just like, oh. You know what they said in the corner? He was like, yeah, dad, you remember he was calling you an old man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I ain't never said that, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't I know swear. what to do. Yeah. <laughs> South Paul. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but look, I yep. swear to God, I ain't never said nothing. But like, James Jones, this is my guy, man. He's a good dude, man. We actually, we keep up. We play pool on the, on the, on the phone together. Um, yeah, good James dude. Some respect. <laughs> good dude. Yeah. Yeah. We got and, um, bomb Chipotle yeah. to the <laughs> He, uh, bro, he's he's a journeyman, but he's a tough. I ain't even like like no. That's just who what he is. And um, he's fought Kelly Pavlik. He's fought like tons of world champions, and they like always bring him in. And he gonna be there. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. He gonna be there for eight, nine, ten, whatever you need him there. He gonna be there. But um, so how many was, rounds was your fight? Was your you the four? Four, four rounds. That was my second yeah. pro. Was four. Yeah. So he won the first, I knocked him down the second. He won the third, they gave one judge, and then a judge gave me the fourth. However they had it, it was a majority split. To get your ass a a majority I don't look crazy on a four round fight. Yeah. You really lost. <laughs> <laughs> the knockdown is what did it. Because the rounds were close, yeah. but the knockdown got me to fight. Yeah. Oh man. Because I beat him like t a round, but he, the knock, he, I still think the round, that I knocked him down, he kind of won it. But the knockdown, like, they had yeah, to give yeah, him had the, to get the, the 10 8. Yeah. yeah. See? James whooped your ass. I know, nigga. Whooped that respect. <laughs> yeah. Everybody you learned a, a James, valuable lesson that night. Everybody got a James Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody here, got a James Jones. But then you look, this nigga been boxing for 35 years. Mm. Bro, like, 80, 80 amateur. He like, probably don't even train. He probably just fight. Show mm -hmm. up. Just show up. Been knocked out, like, twice. Not even knocked out. He been TKO'd. By, like, Kelly Pavlik. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Mm. He nah. said, show up, get his money, and then... Yeah, show up, get yep. his money, and then leave. Back to the post office. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> hey, James, I don't want no problems with you, bro. Lowe's. You yeah. James yeah. ass right there. Yeah. No, I don't want no problems with no... Old. See, and this is what I was going to ask. Like, do you think that's an American thing or it's a black thing? Like, What's when that? we see older people, we just be immediately just be... I don't want to say, like, disrespectful, but just be like... Black. Yeah, it's like man, like, oh, this is, that's nope. it's a black thing. Come huh? on, of course, look at this old ass. But like, that's that's a black thing. How what you think? It's a black thing because I, I did. <laughs> yeah, no, real talk. So oh, I did. Sorry. Um, I did a celebrity softball game with the uh, Dolphins last year. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, I'm out there. I'm talking shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know, and uh, one of the players was like. Strike his old ass. <laughs> you may know who that was. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's the name. Yeah, I was like, damn. Strike. Right. 47. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went like, man, 47. That's the thing. That's the thing. <laughs> so it's a, it's a black thing, man. So, I mean, we got to work on that, then. We got to work on seeing. Good luck. Older. <laughs> Well, it's gonna start with us. We the leaders of, the, you know what I'm saying? We just gonna start with the people like. I just be cracking, man. I don't know. They gonna have to see it. But it's it's from the culture. Like my even my daughter, my daughter cracks already. She's oh, four. Old people. Stinky poopy daddy. Okay. Yeah, stinky poopy daddy. Okay. And it's not a disrespect thing. It's a joke thing. We joke, right? She she has great manners. You talk to her teachers. She's the line leader. My baby, Amaya, the line leader, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> And she and she proud. She the line leader. She swims, but that's just the vibe with me, <laughs> so, right? So roasted niggas is just a part of our culture. It is. There's it, at it no has, point no, where we gotta no, be. But like, here's okay. why it's a good thing. Here's why it's a good thing. I just seen a post last night. Um, this kid, 
he was uh Johnny Starks for Halloween. He like a seven year old, and the, and the mom must have put like a little uh, makeup on him and gave him like his dad button up shirt mm -hmm. and like a name tag. I see what he was trying to do. Whack outfit. Mm -hmm. He went to school. Niggas is laughing at him. That outfit's gay as fuck. He took the shit off. He home crying. So she took a picture of him in the back seat of the car, and he crying. And she's like, it's so sad. I sent she my son to school and grew. blah, 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 blah. I sent my son to school and he gets bullied um, because of his outfit. Kids are so mean. Everyone's in the co thousands of comments. Everyone's like, um, it's okay. Um, uh, kids, uh, this bullying thing needs to stop. Blah, 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 blah. So this is it. It says, words hurt. You see, that's the son. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Little one disguises himself as Tony Stark's for Halloween party at school. His only response... He only responds to Tony or Mr. Stark's mom. But minutes later, they talk to his mom because his classmates <laughs> him told him death. bad things about his costume. They told him he looked stupid. Even arrived at school and immediately, even, uh, Evan arrived at school and immediately went to the bathroom and washed his face. <laughs> when he called crying, so hurt that he didn't even want to stay for the party. This is little Tony Stark's crying his eyes out. So, right, this is him. Look at my comment. Little nigga out for lame as fuck. <laughs> I said, I said, looking like a struggling general contractor. I said, <laughs> I look like you need a manager with Wendy's. What's up, man? I said, I said, this is why I'm roasting everyone in my house and my kids. Man, he's like a train conductor. So they're not mentally weak and bothered by every little bullshit they hear at school. But like, that's on, true, man. man. It's kind of true. Kids, like, think about kids that. Kids are man. mean as fuck, man. Yeah. Tighten up, bro. Well, they like, roasted that man out <laughs> of school. Bro. Yeah, but I mean. To the point where his mama took a picture of him crying. Hey, my, my mama, you greener than the kids. Because then nobody get their phone out and take a picture of him while he was crying. That's a fact. But in the middle of his tears, she said, wait a minute. I, yeah, that's true. Hold on, baby. Yeah. That look, is look true. Comment. Man, I'm look, not finna look, 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 look at my comment. Listen, hey, hey. D, look at my comment. I'm not engaging in this nonsense. Look at my comment. <laughs> you ain't shit for that. See? No. I ain't even gonna read it. That ain't really that bad. But my, that's what I'm tightening up. Man. Yeah, like, you why? Right? Yeah, he fuck, like, you know what? Like, <laughs> roasting is no, no, but for real. Food, bro. No, for real. Roasting is a good thing. It is. And I, and, and I feel like you, because you have that ability, it's gonna help you in your stand up. Because that's gonna be your crowd work. Ah. Uh. You know what I'm saying? Like, with. Every so often, just boom, get into the crowd. Crowd work, crowd work kills. And you like to do that a lot. I don't like. Work. I didn't. I'm not even that good at crowd work. Uh, but you know who's amazing at who? crowd work? Adam Hunter. Is he really? What? He might be the best I've seen. Adam Hunter's crowd work is amazing. I gotta check him. Somebody's yeah, gotta take got Phil's Facebook though, bro. Like, <laughs> you, you gotta stop. Bro. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta ease up. Bro. He'll be all right, man. He'll be all right. But no, nah, but you're up. right, man. It like, gets way worse than that. Yeah, in life, like bro. in life, it, it gets Tighten worse. Up, you gotta, man. you gotta be able to deal with that. <laughs> Come yeah, on, let my man. son ever call me talking about they talked about. I'm gonna start laughing immediately on the phone. <laughs> Just <laughs> like, bro, they they roasted you like I'm, that. I'm, yeah, like oh, I'm building her. I'm building. And I'm coming in. I'm gonna kill every kid. You're beautiful. And and I'm roasting at the same time, right? So her, good luck telling her my, your other, who me, my 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 daughter will take off on you. One because her confidence is already here, mm -hmm. right? She knows she's pretty. She can swim. She knows she athletic. Boom boom boom. And she cracking. Come on, man. But imagine if she go to school dressed like a princess, you know, and they call her a drag queen. I wouldn't you care. Know you know, I wouldn't care because I don't. I she at oh, at four already. So built up. Good luck. Mm. You can't you bulletproof already. Yeah, you know like if you, if you can bulletproof them, bulletproof. And then not only that, but arm them with some ammunition to fire back. So do you think there should be a line where we can say like, all right, this this person can't get roasted or don't nobody. Meaning oh, like, no, 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 no. Here's my thing. Like, like it ain't no age limit. Like, so wait a minute. In, now. in intent. Come on. Oh wow, my mom. <laughs> Did she bring one of these A-games? All right now, come on A-game. This is my little baby just popped in, okay. <laughs> come on. But look, that for me, it's intent, right? You can't be an evil human being. Of right, course, yeah, right. right? Like, sure. You can't be a malicious, <clears throat> evil human. We, we all have reasoning. We all have the bandwidth to understand like who is evil and what is crossing the line. 
You know what I'm saying? Oh man, come on, man. You look at them ashy old knees, man. Man, Come on, man. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Like, you see my, <laughs> see, see how you slip that in? But, but you I'm get what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wrote, I wrote to you earlier this week with that little picture, like the it's, before and after. And I was game. cool. Yeah, and you and I, like, like, yeah. Come on, man. It started the game. Here's what's crazy. You know how many people hit me up and was like, oh, oh my, I'm so proud of you. Like, thought it was me. And really? like, I ran with it. I ran with it. There was this one girl. She's like, a, it's called a Taekwondo something. She's like this famous Taekwondo person. She's like, oh, I'm so proud of you, where you come from. I said, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? Yo, man, some people take things way too serious. Crazy, bro. You gotta start dropping your cash out or something so they Thank see you, some mama. money. All right, yeah, that's all I wanted to see was like, yo, is there an age limit where we can be like, yo, like, come on, man. That, it's, it's, it's all up in the... That's what they do Thank in the barbershop, though. Like, that's what they true, do, right? true. Yeah, we chillin'. They come on in the barbershop, we and, gotta watch But look, man, I gotta take a second, man. I really, man, I really, really appreciate you driving. This man drew up here four hours to be on my podcast, man. I, I, I reached out to him, I said, Dean, I need you to sit in here with me. I need you to do this pod with me. And without hesitation, this guy it has a TV show with Dana White. He's He works for the UFC, works for ESPN on the desk. Like... Working, working. You know what I'm saying? Got his t own podcast on. And I appreciate you, man. I really do from the bottom of my heart, man. And I don't forget about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm still trucking, but I, I won't forget about you helping me. And where this go, you with it, man. You with me. Man, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm here, man. And you doing your thing. Appreciate and you. And I man. just, I like to be around good energy. To me, that's his own currency. People's energy it has a has an effect on me. So when I feel that energy, I, I got to get around it and just build off of it. And what's crazy? I'm slowly transitioning to an old wise nigga. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> real slow. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> He, yeah, he had, he, right after he just like roasted some little ten year old kids like, <laughs> and old people. He said, Babies and old people are supposed to be strictly off limits. Yeah. Look, his look, first quarter for this one. Yeah. Look, side note, my cousin just came here. Uh, pause. He he pulled up here from <laughs> yeah, he Portland. Wild, bro. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. <laughs> he pulled here from Portland, and and it's my 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 blood cousin, my favorite cousin. Uh, I don't care how the other ones feel, and with his son and. My cousin is, in the Bible time, he the God had been like, man, Nathaniel, come on up here, man. You don't belong, these, you don't belong down there with these guys. Like, he is bulletproof. Okay. You know what I'm saying? God-fearing, like, solid cat, bro. Okay. Like, solid cat. All right. Um, and his son is just a mirror image of him. His son, Daniel. Daniel's uh, seven or eight, seven. And we're eating dinner. <laughs> and my goes, sticky booby daddy. And, he, and Daniel goes, he goes, I have friends that say inappropriate words <laughs> about, my, about my cousin. Oh. I said, yo. I said, that was crazy. But side of that made me think of that. But I'm slowly turning into a wise old nigga. Here's why. Like you said, man, it's crazy. I hear all these stories. Um, J. Cole, man, um, no amount of money. Had me this, and now J. Cole got the dreads, and he riding the bike around, and I'm like, these niggas just know how to spend money. You know what I'm saying? Because money gonna make me happy. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they're talking yeah. about. Yeah. But, but, but hear me out, man. It's, it's, I'm, I'm getting to a point, I'm at that point. Of course I like nice things. You know what I'm saying? You see me, Sean? Oh. <laughs> you see the crib? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But, I, see, I see the kick game. Right, we yeah. see. But yeah. like, I don't give a fuck about it, bro. Like, what I get, what, what, what I get my high on is this. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, this right here is invaluable to me. Like, this is is my dopamine right here. Mm -hmm. Like, I just got a new whip, convertible. Wow, it's loud. It's so cool. And it was a milestone in the sense of, okay, I, att I obtained this car, I can get any car. If I can get this car, I can, I can get any car. And I got it. And I was like, yo, man, I was, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I almost, if I blinked, then it came out. But it didn't. It was, it was there. I had yeah, to, yeah, no. I put the, it was, the top was up, yeah. and I'm like, thinking about like where I came from, right? And 
But I'm at a point where it don't mean it don't mean nothing. You know what I'm saying? And this is what matters to me. Like my interactions with people. You know what I'm saying? My interaction with homie that I had the private lesson with and in, in, in our relationship now. And then yo, Phil man, you I really appreciate nobody has ever like those are the moments that I'm looking for now. So like when he says like, oh, this is my car, I get it. I'm slowly getting it. Five years ago, I'm like, I want to hear it, man. I want these, I want that, I want these, I want that, I want. But now I'm at the point like, it is cool. You know what I'm saying? But take it. I don't give a fuck. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You want it here, it's yours. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm realizing that these are the moments that that really matter, you know? Yeah. And I appreciate y'all for having me here, of man. Course, man. Man, I appreciate you. I got a hundred other questions. I nah, would man, listen, take my number and, yes, and hit me up anytime. Like I said, I I love to give advice and to see brothers make it, man. So, yes, sir. Yeah. So, so what? Like, I, like everybody was saying, this is what I want to do too. But to add, we're doing this together as we're helping somebody, right? Like we're all together somewhere at a, at a gym about to speak or you about yeah, to speak yeah. and I'm, but we kicking it right we still I'm still learning about you but then Dean about to go help but I'm helping maybe set Dean's table up you mm -hmm. know what I mean like that's what more so I really would love to do keep the conversation going but we men so we're supposed to be yeah 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 no doubt, man. I would do this that. every week man and, and connect like this every week if I and, and we gotta hold each other accountable we yeah. got to yeah, gotta, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we gotta, gotta listen. To I Dean. always, I always be like, yo, we got chill you. out, man. But this yeah. is why we gotta listen to Dean. Man. That's why at some point we gotta Absolutely. be like, we can't be like, oh, this old ass nigga. Yeah, you know <laughs> I don't be, bro. I'm, I'm not bad. saying you do I'm, that. I'm but so, that's, but that's so much, mix, but that's so much a part of our culture. He in the, you want to see who that nigga got his phone? He in the mix, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm taking heed, bro. Yeah, but we gonna sit and listen though. That's what we gonna sit around do. Valuable, bro. You gonna be the OG, right? And this, you gonna be like a general. Yeah, no, I got y'all, man. This, this is what we supposed to do for each other. I got y'all. Right. But you say it, we do it. That's yeah, how it's gonna yeah, go, though. Like that's how, I'm, that's how I can understand. Yeah. I came from the military. Yeah. It wasn't that hard for me to just hear a man say something crazy, and I ain't gotta get all in my feelings. Mm -hmm. Like Roger that, big dog. Roger that, big Sarge. He might even say it's just man. It's just really about doing the right thing, man. Just doing the right thing and moving forward. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, one more time, please plug your movie. So everybody knows where to go, where to look out for it, where they can find you, how they can keep up with it, and then... Which camera should I get? Yeah, All right, so the movie's called Brotherhood. Uh, it, right now it's on the film festival circuit. I have another one coming out in, in 2025 called Grace Point, so make sure y'all check that out too. That's going to actually be in theaters. But you can catch me on Sirius XM, Dana White looking for a fight, ESPN, on, UFC, man. all that good stuff, so make sure y'all check it out. Tapping in, uh, check out the channel on on YouTube, Philly Fresh MMA, Philly Fresh UFC on on IG. Um, your boy Philly Fresh, my brother Jamo, Dean Thomas, man, and we out. Thank God I got some of this grape A game. <laughs> <laughs>